Coming up, a new micro knife from a new company called Pepperwool. I get the Fisher Blades Beckwith Covert FDE, that's flat dark earth, and 10 great machetes. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments this past week was about some of the videos I put out on the Beckwith Covert Trainer from Fisher Blades. And, uh, well, let's get into it. Uh, uh, Alexa, uh, Alex, Alex Alley Warlock, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, says, Shit. Nice, nicely done, Bob versus Bob. Epic win, my man, and great to see the Beckwith Covert training in action. All right, let me put some context. Bob versus Bob. It was me using this trainer against my body opponent bag or Bob dummy, you know, the, the thing that looks like a man. Um, so that's what I was doing. Uh, I do my drills these days with the awesome Agent 001 trainer, which also doubles as a butter knife. I love that. Double-edged fighter as a butter knife. Anyway, he says, planning on getting the Beckwith, uh, Beckwith Covert also. Uh, Alex, thank you so much. Um, all right. So there's been a little bit of a lull in my non-podcast video output. But when I got this, I was very inspired to show off how this thing works and how trainers work. And of course, I wanted to see, does the old man still have it? I haven't been training much. I've got, I've got obligations and responsibilities. And yes, I'm much slower than I used to be, but it was very fun uh, to have this and take it out on my Bob dummy. I'm going to be doing a lot more training with this. And I, too, have to get the Agent 001 trainer. I don't have it yet. I know, uh, I'm sure a lot of people groaned and moaned at watching this old guy dust off his knife skills, but it was fun for me and it helped me get the ball back rolling. I got a bunch of new videos coming out, uh, so keep your eyes peeled. Now on the same video, now this is for my ego, uh, Mr. Greg T says, where's the old guy? I just see Bobby D. I was like, man, I love you, Mr. Greg T. I don't know you from a hill of beans, but you're my favorite person now. So thank you guys, one and all, for commenting, liking, subscribing, watching the videos. Uh, slow as they've been trickling out, but um, you know how it gets. Uh, I did a video recently called Crushing the Ennui with the, with the V44X Bowie. And uh, yeah, that ennui, that sense of like, oh, why bother? It's, it's been creeping in. Uh, but now I feel refreshed and renewed. Maybe more than 50%, probably about 75% of the country feels refreshed and renewed and ready to go at it with vim and vigor and with some virality. And you don't have to be a man to be virile. <laughs> all right, coming up, all that said, let us now get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. So today in my front right pocket, I had the, uh, this is the Turbo from Monterey Bay Knives. This is designed by the legend Peter Carey. He's a tactical folder legend. He's one of the guys who first put a flipper on a custom tactical folder. And uh, he's been on the show. He is uh, an amazing designer and an amazing maker. And this is the closest I will ever get to one of his custom knives, no doubt. Unless I'm at Blade Show and I get a chance to handle one. But uh, I love his uh, design language. And when this came out from Monterey Bay Knives, I scooped it up post-haste. Uh, I did have it altered by um, uh, out there by uh, um, uh, Lindy Lou and Richie. And they did a beautiful job on it, making it that high voltage green with the acid stonewash blade. They did put this gold clip on it. I told them uh, the clip is uh, chef's choice. And uh, years later, I'm kind of not loving the gold. It's a little too garish for me. <clears throat> Never been a gold guy. And it shows up on, it, it just uh, advertises you're carrying this. So I think I might send the clip back to them. Been saying that for ages just to have it acid stone washed and darkened. But anyway, uh, I love this thing. I'm still using a lot of flippers these days. Uh, thumb studs are uncomfortable for my right hand thumb right now. So uh, the flippers are king um, and not even front flippers, just regular forefinger. My forefinger is fine. 
So this is what I was carrying today. By the way, uh, Lindy Lou and Richie put a razor sharp edge on this. It was already sharp, but man alive. They really, they did the work on this one. They did the work and it came out beautifully. All right, next up in my vacillating back and forth from left to right uh, front pocket in the duties dagger slip. This is so beautiful. I love that green leather slip. But what's in there is the C. Reisner and Company Ohio River Jack uh, with the Warncliffe blade. This is my favorite of the th of the uh, three versions of this. And by the way, uh, I'm pretty sure they just re-released this knife. So if you want to get yourself an Ohio River Jack, I believe they have this out again. And if I'm not mistaken, I mean, this is not the, this is a dusty old mind here, but I pretty sure they released it with a, a fourth blade shape, another blade shape. So go check it out. I'm not sure. Can't remember. What can you expect? Uh, but beautiful, beautiful canvas uh, micarta, natural canvas micarta on this one. Um, when you look across companies, the quality of micarta varies. And I feel like this is very fine micarta. All of the lines are super straight on, on, the, on the threads and the fibers. And uh, it takes on your personal filth signature and it just feels great in hand. Awesome knife there. All right, uh, next, this is one I haven't carried in quite a while, uh, the Nova One, the one that started it for me in terms of having uh, designing knives and having them made. This one by Hogtooth Knives. You know, the Nova Two is now in process. That's the Kiridashi version of this same knife with the same handle, uh, slightly longer blade. This, of course, 154 CM recurve Bowie blade um, with the polished, maroon micarta uh, so there are mm, 24 people out there with this uh, my daughter when she graduated eighth grade got one and i know a low bar and my wife uh has one and my other daughter has one waiting for now eighth grade i gotta give it to her when she graduates eighth grade but anyway a uh, great knife uh, this is the prototype things changed uh the green uh, i mean the red liners turned to green the jimping moved forward right up to the swedge and there was a few other things, but really, really great knife. And Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives is such an excellent knife maker and definitely one of my favorite people and knife makers out there. All right. Lastly, uh, for emotional support, my ESK today was the Aries by Orion Knives. I love this thing. Thank you, Michael Cam. Uh, Michael Cam, he is Blade Banter. He's the guy in charge of that uh, incredible pass around group a b he's got the blade banter channel but really it's this it's his uh knife company this design is probably my favorite of the ones i have i have three of his knives it's a a um, button lock right there on the pivot so that's what you press that and it comes down um, for me the main opening method of this is that fuller it's a sharp shouldered fuller so you can get the fattier uh, finger in there and flip it open of course you can also hold down the button let me do this hold down the button and whip it out like you can with uh, most most knives excuse me and uh yeah this one is a beauty 14c 28 and under 100 dollars, and a limited release so if this knife interests you which it might interest a lot of you with its compound ground half hollow or mostly hollow ground blade uh flat and uh, flat up here at the tip with the midline point. Beautiful Tonto. Go over to Orion Knives, seek out the Aries, and uh, and spend less than 100 and get this amazing knife. By the way, this one has a sculpted titanium clip on it too uh, with a backspacer. Very, very nice knife and just fun to play with, I got to say. I can even do it with my left hand. All right, this is what I had on me today. The Turbo from Monterey Bay Knives, the Ohio River Jack from C. Reisner Cutlery, the Nova One from Yours Truly and Hogtooth Knives, and the Aries from Orion Knives. Now, please, if you don't mind, let me know what you had on you. Drop it in the comments below. Always interesting to survey that and uh, find out what you guys have been carrying. All right, well, I got to say, uh, this is something that just popped up. It's a sad day for me, I got to say. It's a sad day because this arrived. I love this. I love when this arrives. This is the Smoky Mountain Knifeworks paper catalog. 
All right. Now, let me back this up by saying, uh, you know, I grew up in the, I'll say the 80s. I mean, I was alive all through the 70s, but really came online, if you will, in the 80s. And that was the golden era of paper catalogs. My dad growing up was a clothes horse. So we got all sorts of J. Crew and Land's End catalogs and this and that. And, uh, and then I don't know if you remember the sharper image. This is all pre-internet. Uh, every year, especially around Christmas, uh, you get paper catalogs and you would sit on the john and leaf through them or you know, just, you know, uh, circle items and hand it to your parents and say, I want this for Christmas. Uh, Amazon still sends one out and we get that from our girls. But this is the very last Smoky Mountain Knifeworks paper catalog to come out. And I got to say, man, it's not even bittersweet. It's just bitter. Uh, I love this catalog. I think it comes quarterly or bi-monthly. I, I, I haven't kept track, uh, but it, it always goes immediately down to the uh, side of the throne basket in my own personal um office right off of this room and uh this is what i do I'm, I'm trying to go old school when i go into that room i mean we all bring our phones i know that but i'm trying to do that less because oftentimes i'll be out there in the real world thinking like this phone has been in there keep a catalog in there keep a book in there let's go old school again when we use the necessary room and uh i, I would say start with the smoky mountain knife works very last catalog this is a sick uh, a, a thick sucker i should say it's got so much in it and i think um i think they were you know uh, aware of the fact that this would be the last one so they really did it up i mean they even have the kaiser in here the kaiser knives they have the Microtex and the SEs and the tops, and they have everything in here. Whereas recently I was looking at one thinking, wow, why did they only put all the cheap crap in this, in this, uh, catalog? So, uh, and that was a past catalog. This one is the bomb. Check it out. I would, I would order it or call up Smoky Knife, uh, Mountain Knife Works and get it because it's going to be a relic after this Christmas season. If you like paper catalogs, if you're a man of a certain age like myself or woman, you might like these paper catalogs. This is the last you'll ever get of this amazing Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog. And I, uh, it was a couple of years ago, I had my daughter on this show, and uh, we have a game where we would flip through. Which one would you pick on this page? Which one would you pick on this page? Can't do that anymore. So get this one and uh, keep the tradition up. Very happy to have this and very sad to see you go, Smoky Mountain Knifeworks paper catalog. That said, I think it's time to get to some knife news. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. It's been very encouraging to see the Kai USA companies. That's Kershaw and ZT. There are others like Shun. But it's very been very nice to see Kershaw and ZT coming out with some new knives recently. Because uh, there's been nothing from ZT for a few years except for a few little exclusive drops. And Kershaw, you know, they've been up to their old tricks. It's all... Uh, you know, fine and dandy, but we, we've got a lot of Kai USA stuff here in Knife News tonight, and I'm uh, I'm happy about that. First one is from the Kershaw, is from Kershaw, it's the Dawn Star. Look at that thing. The Kershaw Dawn Star really appeals to the inner mall ninja in me, and this is sort of a mall ninja knife all around, not just because it has that dramatic uh, hawkbill blade, which it's beautiful. It is beautiful, uh, but also because it's in 8CR13 MOV with an assisted open, uh, like the old school. Uh, 3.5 inches of 8CR13 MOV, as a matter of fact. Black wash there. Uh, that's an FRN handle. So this is like a big box configuration, but look at, the, look at the knife. It's really, really cool, and this would be a great one to see them migrate to their launch series i would love to see this thing in an automatic version uh so that uh that that triangular hole at the ricasso is not an opening hole um and and then look south of that hole and 
check out that sharpening swedge. It's it's like three quarters of a complete circle uh, of that sharpening choil. I'm sorry, I said swedge. Uh, one way to open this is with that flipper tab. And um, yeah, I just like the old school throwback mall ninja aspect of this. And I also think it's beautiful. And oftentimes they'll do, uh, they'll, they'll uh, look at different design aspects in their cheaper models and then migrate them upwards. So hopefully they do that with the launch series because I think it's cool. Plus it's three and a half inches. And that's my, that's my like entry level length. So loving that. All right, next up, this is a beauty. Uh, this is from Topps Knives, one of my favorite companies out there. This one's called the Tundra Wolf. And the Tundra Wolf is a collaboration with Trevor Barrett, who's an Alaskan knife maker and uh, outdoorsman. And so this is a knife made for the outdoors, but it, it's got a different look to it. I look at this and I see a fighting knife. Um, but we all have our own lens uh, through which we look. Uh, 5.75 inches of 1095. Um, ben Schwartz, the, the great and powerful Ben Schwartz of Knife News, who is a great writer, uh, calls this a drop point, and he's wrong. This is a clip point, clearly, but I love you, Ben. Uh, this is a sweeping clip point blade. It's got that giant swale on the spine, and then a full continuous belly of an edge. So it looks like a great skinner, but look at the point. The point to me with that uh, very center line point with the swedge and the, the triangular shape looks like, um, looks like something for fighting. And then also, so does the handle. Um, anyway, this uh, sweeping clip point is unusual for an outdoor knife, I would say. It comes with a Kydex sheath on a dangler and um, it's 17.3 ounces with the sheath, so that's over a pound. It's a chunk, uh, but that's a quarter inch of 1095 with thick micarta scales and kydex. So, yeah, it'll be a little bit heavy, but <clears throat> not too much for the studs and studettes who listen to this to carry. So, Tops Tundra Wolf from Trevor Berger and Tops Knives. I really like this one. Maybe it'll appear here. Maybe. Next up, from K-Bar. K-Bar is now fully adopting uh, MagnaCut, as are many companies. And for K-Bar, it started with a, a, a test bed release of the BK-16, uh, the Becker Knives uh, 16, a very popular model. That thing sold like gang bucks, uh, busters. People loved that. And so that was proof of concept enough for K-Bar to adopt MagnaCut into their regular production line. The first knife they will be releasing in that line is the BK2, probably the most selling uh, uh, Becker model from K-Bar. Uh, Ethan Becker, I got a chance to meet him at uh, Blade Show two years ago. Um, what, a, what a cool dude. By the way, he also helped um, Julia Child uh, write uh the joy of cooking the the most famous cookbook in of all time basically so ethan becker is a is a man among men um but this this thing uh, looks great it, it will have the first uh, it will have the um i'm sorry what am i trying to say the standard ergonomics of the becker uh, bk2 uh everything else will be the same the sheath is the same except it's got that new logo you can see uh bk and k bar on the show side of the sheath uh, which is funny um, but there you go this one is available now so if you like the bk2 which many 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 of you do even non-knife guys who are outdoorsmen love this knife well now it's in magna cut the best of all steels ever so go get yours now all right lastly let me take a sip of coffee here lastly from zero tolerance i mentioned kershaw up front Zero tolerance, which is kind of like a, it's it's like an agricultural field lying fallow the, the past few years, kind of kind of in spurts, like putting out one or two things. I think they're back. They just dropped two knives, one a fixie, very, very appealing to me, and also a very appealing automatic. So yeah, they're coming out of hibernation with the zero tolerance ZT0004. That's the one you're looking at right now on your screen. Ben Schwartz of uh, 
of Knife News calls that a drop point. This is where he and I differ like every week. He calls those drop points. I call that a clip point. Uh, but this little beauty uh, is a four and uh, four point two inch. So four and a quarter inch clip point Cerakoted crew wear. Uh, I don't remember ZT ever doing any knife in crew wear, uh, but look at that beauty. And then you can see through those hexagonal uh, Chicago bolts there right through the handle so i'm um, presumably you could put a you know create a lanyard situation there um i'm 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 almost upset they put this out because i really kind of want to have this but i definitely don't want to buy it right now but it looks very cool i like it i don't have any zt fixed blades <clears throat> but that appeals greatly to me uh that will come with uh a leather sheath too and i love leather just like Frank Zappa. All right, here we go. Uh, the last one here, if you scroll down, is the ZT0556 automatic. Uh, this is the first automatic under the ZT shingle. So Kai USA is used to doing the automatics with the launch series, but this is the first one that's a zero tolerance. And man alive, that is beautiful. Uh, all but one detail, and I'll tell you in a sec what I think. Uh, but the only auto in the ZT current catalog, 3.35 inches. I wish it were longer, but I can live with that. Again, Schwartz says that's a drop point. I say that's a clip point. Magna cut. Nice magna cut blade. Titanium handle with a long carbon fiber inlay. Therein lies the rub. They're using the basket weave uh, carbon fiber from 2008 right there. And I, I'm just not a fan. Uh, but since it's not the whole handle, I could live with it, uh, especially when I watch their product release video where um, they're making a, an old fashioned with it and they're cutting the cutting the fruit and pouring the whiskey. And I'm like, oh, that knife looks good. Like, how cool would you look at your next party uh, cutting the cutting the the fruit for the drinks with the uh, the orange, I guess it is uh, with the ZT. Very cool. Uh, but the my only the only thing that sticks in this here craw is that basket weave carbon fiber i've never been a fan i like all the other kind of carbon fibers not that this one comes with a reverse carry deep uh reverse deep carry pocket clip but it's only a right-handed knife you can see the actuator button is set up for right-handed carry 2.4 ounces which is very light for a 3.35 inch blade they say an ounce a an ounce an inch in terms of blade length so this comes way under that and it's available now, as is the 0004. Yeah, it's out now, 0004. All right, everybody, uh, we're going to move on to the state of the collection. I have two cool things here to show you. But before we do, I'd uh, like to urge you to go over to Patreon and check out the kind of things we have to offer over there. Uh, interview extras. You like some of the people we talk to. You like probably most of them. Uh, you can go over there. Uh, sign up to be a gentleman junkie and you can get um, all of the interview extras. Actually, you get the interview extras no matter what tier of support. Gentleman junkie, you get entered into the monthly knife giveaway. And we've been giving away some very fine blades uh, lately. So definitely go check that out. Uh, go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code right here on your screen. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp, crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Look at that. Isn't she a little honey? All right. So this is a sweet new knife sent to me by Baron McKay, who uh, of his new company, Pepper Wool. This is the Merino MM. And thank you very much, Baron, for sending this along. Now, uh, Baron McKay was a designer at SOG. Uh, you might see some of his de design language right here in this new knife. Uh, I saw it immediately. He reached out to me, said, I have a new company called Pepperwool. Uh, I will have him, him explain the, the very cool name, but I like his uh, reasoning for naming it that. Um, 
And he let me know that he used to work at SOG. He was one of the head designers. And uh, this is his new knife from his new company. Now, uh, in about four and a half years ago, SOG did a whole rebranding. I had Jonathan Wegner on the show. He was the gentleman who was um, in charge of the business angle, uh, strategy angle of doing all that uh, uh, rebranding over there at SOG. And then two years ago, they sold to GSM like Cold Steel and uh, lots of people left SOG. And Baron was one of them. And he has started his own company called Pepperwool. And this little Merino MM is an awesome knife. I just got it. And sorry, that was a that was a left-handed actuation. It does actually work beautifully. Um, so it's a it's a very small uh, S35VN semi tanto, and I say semi tanto because it's got the secondary point there, but the whole thing is flat ground. Uh, I just received this yesterday and have not cut a thing with it, but I am very much looking forward to to uh, tucking into this. It's got that uh, deep carry pocket clip that mounts on the top. So you can swap it to either side. A very, very nice bar lock. I'm going to use my right hand. Very nice bar lock. Comes all the way into the handle without that kind of secondary stop you get on a lot of bar locks that don't know. Um, <clears throat> first time I've ever had a knife this colorful, i.e. with the blue blade. I absolutely love it. Uh, Cerakoted S35VN. Very sharp, wicked little little uh, edc blade super small very um unthreatening if you will great fifth pocket carry or drop in the pocket or clip on the pocket with that great clip but uh, i'm very excited about this knife uh, as i record this this came in last night so i've only had this in my hot little hands for about uh six waking hours and i dig it i really do the one thing i would want on this personally is a lanyard hole. I know I am definitely in the minority there. I like lanyard holes on small knives because I tend to drop these in the pocket rather than clip them. And the the fob or the lanyard I put on there helps keep the knife oriented north to south in my pocket and also makes it easier to grab. Not to mention the fact that when you have it fully in hand, it gives you a little bit extra for the pinky to grab onto. Um, definitely not a deal breaker with this knife. If I really wanted to, I could just put a lanyard through the clip. I've seen people do that, but it's not definitely not a big deal for me. <clears throat> Merino MM CPM S35 VN cryo heat treated. Beautiful. I love that pepper wool logo. Uh, not easy to, uh, copy there with all those lines and dots, but very cool. Baron, thank you so much for sending this. Uh, I'm going to do a close up video of this, uh, one of these days soon. And I'd love to have Baron on the show to talk about working at SOG and then uh, lighten up for the territories and starting his own company. So a really cool knife. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next up, a knife you've seen before, but in a different configuration, different colorway, not configuration, but colorway, is the Beckwith Covert. Yes, I was talking about this before, the trainer. Uh, this one here is in flat, dark earth. Flat, dark earth. Look at that beauty. I... I love this setup. Now, I will tell you one thing, though. <clears throat> I have three versions of this knife now. A black on black, the original with the red liners. This one and a unicorn edition. That's got this very special coloration and the unicorn. That one will stay pristine. But between the FDE and the all black version, I'm going to be doing some scale swapping because uh, I think it looks, I think it'll look cool to have a black handle on this and the tan handle on uh, the black blade that's just my personal taste this one comes with that really nice super dark teal or forest green there uh but everything else is the same it's got that super aggressive i don't want to say super aggressive that sounds like it's going to hurt but that very effective jimping there <clears throat> on the thumb ramp incredibly sharp these dudes uh chaz and john get these knives wickedly sharp and then the great handle with the quillion which helps you draw the knife and uh, helps it stay in hand. I'm a huge fan of this knife and very happy to see it come out in flat, dark earth. Like what they're doing over there in Montana, big sky state. Beauty. All right. Well, 
I think it's time to get to machetes. What do you say? Are you interested? I know you are because I got this new one <clears throat> from Schrade and it's new to me. It's been out for a couple of years. I'm going to show this one in its sheath as I might all of them, but I love this sheath, especially um, the way it looks. Well, first of all, it's a, it's a sort of molded plastic sheath and the blade itself slides in and out. It does not lock into the sheath unless you use this uh, tab. So I do that on a machete or a sword or anything large like that. I don't want it to lock in to the kydex like a regular smaller knife. You want to be able to draw it and use it. You don't want to be struggling with something that large. So I like the retention in this sheath, but I also like these wings here. Um, they send a strap so you can clip to the strap. It can be like a, um, a baldric so it hangs around your neck. And I, I really like that aspect, but I love the way these wings look. Uh, they remind me of the uh, the sheaths for the Chris, like this one right over my shoulder here. Um, the old school Filipino sheaths with the with the flare on the on the top. That's what that reminds me of. Um, but when you unsheath it, this is what you get. A beautiful recurve blade here. <clears throat> this thing is a stunning, um, has a stunning profile. Uh, I, I saw this from uh, Calis Americano and I had to get it. He's a, an, a, an incredible uh, Kali guy and Bowie knife fighting guy. I just started following on YouTube and I saw him working with this and I had to get one. <clears throat> And put the sheath aside here. So this is designed by, uh, oh yeah, Joshua Wagner. And he's been on the scene for a while. We've seen other knives from him. Uh, and there's definitely a Filipino or Southeast Asian influence here in the handle um, with that sort of um, broadening uh, horse hoof pommel there and then the curve to, to fit the palm. But what I really love about this knife is that beautiful recurve bolo style blade. It is really sharp, uh, really good looking. Good looking. And I'm just a S-C-H-M-B-S. Uh, so this is in their Delta class and it's called the decimate, the decimate. So you're, 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 you're reducing your enemy's force by what, 90%, leaving 10% of them? Is that what decimate means? Or are you killing one of 10? I can't remember exactly what decimate means. Um, but it doesn't mean to fully destroy. There was a period of time about five years ago where people were using the term decimate to mean like absolutely positively destroy it. That's not what it means. It means 10%. And I don't remember if it's 10% are living or 10% are dead, but whatever it is, uh, if you do it with this, it'll be very effective. Um, so what have I used this for so far? Um, like two or three things yesterday outside. I had a full on epic lawn day yesterday, raking and cleaning and clearing vines. This did a little bit of a vine clearing, but most of them were very close to a fence. and I didn't want to, I just couldn't swing this near that fence and risk damaging the fence or the knife. So I used a smaller knife for that. But uh, this did take down a couple of saplings uh, growing next to my big tulip poplar. Um, very cool logo here, by the way. Okay, Joshua Wagner. Uh, love this thing. Uh, uh, bought it on Amazon. I think it's pretty inexpensive. I think uh, uh, most of you, if you have similar tastes, will not have any problem um, buying this knife. I'm putting out for it. Oh, that didn't sound right, but you know what I mean. All right, so that's that's the decimate from Schrade. Now, if you could see my rather large desk with all of these rather large machetes, it's all very precarious. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to be putting them uh, over there. Okay, next one is from Condor Knife and Tool down in El Salvador. This one, first of all, comes with a beautiful and super stout uh, welted. Um, leather sheath, but the blade itself, this is the Golok from Condor, has gotten quite a bit of use. This is a way more heavy duty uh, machete than most on this table. When I think of machetes, I think of thin, flexible blades 
that go through uh, light to medium vegetation. This one is more of a quarter inch slab uh, that goes through heavy vegetation and other people. Um, the Golok, of course, is a, a design from South Southeast Asia, excuse me, that uh, flexes between combat and utility, like very, very regularly. And when you say Golok, that can mean a lot of different blade shapes. Uh, but this uh, is um, I, I, an iconic version of that. That's what I mean. With that big bulbous pommel here and the walnut handle, which is almost too big for my hand. I mean, it's a really thick handle. Um, but you'll find through lots of use that thick handle helps you out. Um, there's less fatigue trying to grip onto a, a smaller handle if you're chopping uh, for long periods of time. I've had this one for quite a while and I just sort of rediscovered it. Um, at one point, I couldn't get it sharp enough. And um, so I kind of set it aside. Uh, but I have, as you can tell from all the use on the blade, gotten it sharp. And this thing is wicked. Let me put it, let me go to the, the main camera here. I should do that for each one of these just so you can see. So it's about, yeah. Big fan of walnut, by the way. All the old World War II rifles have walnut furniture. It's very appealing to me. All right. Set that down over there. Next up. Now, this one I never would have gotten, to be quite honest, on my own. Uh, but I received this as a freebie from Cold Steel. Where did I get this from? It wasn't from Cold Steel. This was from an order, I think, Chicago, Knifeworks, or Midway. One of my two favorite sort of discount Cold Steel dealers. Uh, sent this for spending a certain amount of money. Uh, this is the Axis machete. And it's got this incredible saw on the back. And yeah, that saw really works. I've been I've been entertaining saws a lot more recently since I've been watching bushcraft videos and getting way more interested in different ways of starting fires. And if I'm lost in the woods or if the bottom falls out, which I thought it might until last this past week, like I might be cooking fires over, I might be uh, cooking dinner over open fires in the backyard uh, with scavenged wood coming up here soon. If things continue as they are, uh, luckily they won't. Uh, but this saw is amazing. And like I said, I've been entertaining uh, different saw blades and how they're set up. And I, I think this one is uh, pretty good with its staggered um, teeth. Now, it does not work as well as, say, uh, a silky saw or one of the saws uh, that are dedicated saws, but this one has uh, the very sharp hollow ground edge on this side and the um, saw on this side. So it's sort of a jack of all trades, perhaps master of none. But I like the long rubber handle. You can get all the way back here with the lanyard and do some chopping. It's relatively thin and light, as most machetes should be, so you need a little bit of that length and leverage to be effective. I have not taken this apart. I can tell it's not full tang just from where they place the screws, but does that matter? Probably not. And then it's got this hole for hanging it up if you're just going to put it in the shed. A pretty cheesy sheath here, I got to say, but it'll do in a pinch, and it's very inexpensive. Eight, uh, I'm sorry, three CR 13 MOV steel. I know you're all barfing in your mouth right now, but I got to say three CR is great. Very, very tough steel. Uh, my black mule Bowie from Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. Uh, and, I'm sorry, from Rough Rider and Smoky Mountain Knifeworks is incredible. I really put that three CR to the test. And I like it. And Cold Steel has been putting out their cheap big box knives in 3CR. So I have some other people, uh, other knife companies. And that it's it's a very tough steel. Now, it's not, it's not a luxury steel. You're not going to want it on your fancy folding knives or even your fancy fixed blade knives. But for something you're going to take out and bang around and chop into wood and light vegetation, that kind of thing, the toughness and the edge retention of the 3CR is... Uh, I gotta say it's pretty shocking. Uh, I think it's better than eight CR, but it's like five less, right? All right, so that is the cold steel axis machete. All right, this is one I never would have gotten on my own. It was a gift from my brother-in-law, and it's awesome.
awesome. I've been using it for, mm, I don't know, over 10 years now. It's from Gerber and it's a Bear Grylls knife. This is the Bear Grylls Parang machete. And this also is 3CR13 MOV. And look at this thing. This thing has gotten a lot of use. Uh, this lives in my shed, actually. Uh, so this is hanging all, all seasons, probably getting uh, menaced by squirrels and everything else that gets into my shed. Uh, but it's really a pretty damn good machete. And I <clears throat> actually um, credit the shape. It's a great shape, a great angle to handle, you know, edge to handle angle is awesome. Uh, the steel does punk out on you pretty quick on this knife, I got to say. Uh, that's kind of why it ended up as uh, on permanent shed duty. Uh, but for just powering through uh, twigs and stuff, and um, we have a little section with saplings that always pop up and I'm always going at them. Uh, this has been good for that. And I, I kind of don't, I, I care about it because my brother-in-law gave it to me and I love him and I, I never want to discourage knife gifts, but I don't care about it as much as maybe some of my other things. So I really kind of go well, with it, uh, go at it with abandon with this knife. And um, maybe I should do that with all of them. I'd probably see how far you can push them. Very comfortable handle. However, I did put a um, a little cord wrap on it just to make it a little, little better for me. Uh, I got the the fob, or the lanyard there for around the thumb use, back of the hand. And uh, yeah, I dig this thing. Now on the back of it, it comes with a, uh, this is like a survival knife for them. So it comes with this um, little pocket that has different ways to signal rescue and stuff. And then in there, it just sort of cracked over time. Uh, there's a little survival guide that I never opened up, but I just put it in my little survival kit. So if I ever need it, I can pop it open, see how I'm supposed to survive. <clears throat> the Bear Grills and Gerber Penang Machete. You guys have any of the Bear Grills knives? I know Bear Grills, uh, I mean, I wouldn't mess with him uh, and I wouldn't try and out survive him, but I know there was a lot of controversy around his show where he was actually uh, staying in hotels and stuff like that. Uh, when he was supposed to be out there, you know, eating rotten sheep on the tundra, doing whatever he does. All right, next up, this was one from my brother, and this is definitely the heaviest, thick, thickest by half uh, on the table here. This is the Collins machete. This is a World War I era machete. And this one, by the way, um, has a brass shape and throat here and a really exquisitely tooled leather um, uh, leather portion of the sheath. Now, obviously, th this was not issued with all that. Whoever had this did beautiful work on it. And this is one of the ones that my brother got from some gun show somewhere. Well, in Ohio, no doubt. But he, he finds all these really cool old artifacts. Uh, this thing is thicker than a quarter inch, at least at the at the center of the blade. It does have a beautiful distal taper on the tang here. And old walnut furniture. I mean, this sucker is old. You can see how it's separating from the uh, from the tang there. It is heavy as hell, man. It's a heavy. I mean, just holding it here, I'm struggling. Uh, it's it's damn heavy. There's a kind of a a uh, an occlusion that goes all the way through the blade here, um, but it's such a thick slab. I can't imagine it being any problem. Uh, I have never used this. I love the way it looks. I love the very very filipino influenced shape of this you know this this came out after the um filipino american war is that was called when we were down there and the marines were there and they developed the 45 to stop all the <clears throat> filipino fighters bolo fighters well you know there was never an american knife that looked like this before that era with that deep deep belly i mean that that angle uh um, edge angle to handle um, is just crazy. What else is crazy is that <clears throat> back in the day when people were being issued this, they also had uh, heavy canvas uniforms, heavy, everything was heavy. There was not, none, none of this uh, high tech garbage we use today that's so light and beautiful and strong, like titanium and uh, all the wicking fabrics. So they're laden down 
with all this heavy equipment. And then they're like, here, you're going to need this giant machete. Uh, also hang that on your belt. So just something to remember. We are not descended from weak men. That is for damn sure. Uh, and this knife, uh, which is like three pounds without the sheath, uh, definitely attests to that. Uh, again, with that thick, thick blade, this is definitely meant for heavier stuff. This is not a light vegetation machete. You can see where it goes on the wall. Okay, next up, from Shrade again. This is another cool one. Also Filipino influence. The first one uh, uh, with the uh, the decimate had that influence. This one also definitely has this. This was sent to me by an awesome viewer, and uh, I really, really am very grateful for it. Before I get into the knife itself, it does have this cool utility pocket with a ferro rod and a sharpener, which I need to rediscover now that I'm into starting fires with ferro rods. But this uh, you can take off. It removes right there. This is Schrade's Bolo machete. So very, very barong influenced, that long, beautiful leaf-shaped blade, and then the angled off handle with the bird's beak. I mean, you can chop all day long with this thing. Uh, it's got a very comfortable ergonomic rubberized handle. The bird's beak works great. Or if you need to come up here for quote unquote finer work, as they like to say, uh, you can do that too. I always thought this passage was an odd design choice, but I don't hate it. Uh, and it definitely is safe for stopping your fingers from coming up. It's a great safety mechanism because it's grippy and it's, you know, it's mechanically and, and chemically a great way to stop your finger from going up there. I do love the pommel too. I love that shape and the security of having your hand rest in that back spot is great. And then having that um, leaf shaped um, hollow ground blade at, at a downward angle to the handle accelerates all the chops. It's like having essentially like having a kukri in your hands uh, because that that downward belly uh, just is cutting before your, your hand even gets there. Uh, this one is also 3CR13 MOV. And as I as I live and breathe and age, I'm seeing that that uh, blade steel is popping up a lot in these kind of out, inexpensive outdoor knives. And I think it's because it's, it's just super tough and it holds a great edge, at least in my experience. Uh, excellent sheath and something cool here that you'll see on some machetes, especially with these kind of... Um, shapes that widen towards the tip you have to accommodate that width at the throat of the sheath so this one opens up here too so it pulls out easily uh, locks in more once you have that snapped you can still pull it out uh, but if you're out there working all day with this on your uh, hip or this one actually also has a baldric i took it off for uh, the purposes of having it on the table but if you have this around and you're just pulling it out chop and chop and putting it back in you're going to want to unsnap that snap so it goes in easier. You don't want to be cutting through your sheath um, due to the snug fit. This is the Schrade Bolo Machete. All right, this next one is in the same vein. It is a barong, but this is from Cold Steel. And this one, pardon me while I whip my whistle. This one is the first version that Cold Steel put out of the Barong machete. So what you get here, uh, besides that pretty stout nylon sheath, is a beautiful, I mean, this is a true Barong shape. This is, uh, you can tell, you know, Lynn Thompson designed this. He is a, a Filipino martial arts expert and uh, knows everything about everything <laughs> in terms of Filipino knife fighting and other kinds. But uh, so he, he really nailed the shape of that blade. So really continuous belly here from stem to stern. So great for slashing and cutting down um, light to medium material. I mean, you could go to town on something heavy with this. It would just take a while. Uh, but also he maintained the tip. And the tip is something you see on barongs for stabbing. Because barongs started out as machetes, but ended, out, ended up as weapons. Here we have... Uh, a 
uh, traditional sort of El Salvadorian um, uh, handle here with that lobed pommel. So a, a sort of very familiar handle here on an unfamiliar blade when this came out. Now the Barong Machete uh, put out by Cold Steel has a traditional styled hooking pommel, similar to some of the stuff you see on the on the wall behind me, like this one right here. Where you see that hook come down, it really encapsulates your hand, kind of covers your pinky and your ring finger even. Uh, so I always wanted to get one of those just to have that handle. But I got to say, in terms of use, this one is outstanding because this rubberized handle and this very uh, um, traditional machete shape uh, makes for a great combination. I'm going to go wide on this one to the widescreen. So I would highly recommend this. This one is made in China. I know they make most of their barongs or most of their um, machetes now in South Africa. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend you check out. If you're looking for a machete, check out this barong shape. It is pretty damn sweet. Very effective for doing what you need to do with chopping down um, uh, vegetation, chopping down vegetation and stuff. But in terms of thrusting, if you ever consider flexing this into a weapon or a home defense item, you're going to want a tip that you could push into something uh, easily. Unlike most traditional machetes, which we're about to get to three of them. Cold steel barong machete V1. All right. Next up, this is the one that my wife keeps on her office chair. Um, this was a, a gift turn it around this way from uh, Costa Rica. Uh, but it's an El Salvadorian blade. So beautiful uh, leather sheath, Costa Rica here. And then check this out. And listen, I'm going to pull it out in front of the mic. Sing. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, but here it is. It's a, a Cornetta brand number uh, 127 machete. And this one has seen a lot of use. And it's been sharpened a number of times. And I even dulled out the tip a little bit, but this thing is awesome. Super light, super thin. It's got this uh, inj um, molded handle around it. Uh, seemingly a full tang because I can see metal through the lanyard hole. And so it probably comes down to about here, but it's got that traditional lobed pommel there uh, to stop it from coming out of your hand, but also give you a lot of reach and a lot of leverage. Um, yeah, so at one point, my wife is like, I want uh, a sword or a machete in my office just to keep on my chair. She's got other stuff in there that's uh, more effective, if you will. But uh, if someone comes within chopping range of her, she's got this. And uh, yeah, she wanted something that was good for her size. I showed her everything that I had, and she picked this. So this uh, cool machete. Um now I'm trying to remember who gifted this to me. I know it was a family member, but I don't remember who. But the sheath, man, the sheath is beautiful. Uh, probably worth vastly more than the machete itself. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, when my dad, my dad went down to El Salvador a couple of times on medical missions uh, back before Bukele was president and uh, threw everyone in jail, <laughs> which I love. And not everyone, but all the scumbags and criminals. Uh, everyone walking around El Salvador, my dad said, had a machete. I'm sure that hasn't changed because people still need to work. He also said every store had a guy with an AK-47 and, and, um, it was a, um, interesting place to be. Uh, I have a, a cousin through marriage from El Salvador and I love hearing stories about that place. And someday I'd love to go there actually. Uh, but this, this will do until I do. Uh, this is the Cornuto, no, Corn, Cornetta number 127 with a beautiful, beautiful sheath. All right. On the same theme, uh, my brother just got me this um, not that long ago. I just showed this off. This is a Distin U.S. military issue machete. Distin was the company. Of course, a lot of different uh, companies were... were um, uh, recruited and licensed to make the same sort of design. Uh, this is that, again, that tr uh, traditional machete shape. However, this one is U.S. military issue from 1943. I'm hoping you can see that on the screen. 
It's got a bake light handle that's round and really, really nicely uh, contoured. And this incredible blade that's still wickedly sharp. I'm sure this has been sharpened many times by the various people who have owned this uh, over time. But this is another acquisition uh, my brother made from a uh, Pew Pew show. I only say that because I think they demonetize you if they hear you say the G word. Um, it's got that traditional lobed pommel with a full tang. That's what you want. You really want a full tang on a machete because you never know what you might hit. You never know what might be behind that vegetation that you're chopping down. You might uh, chop into some jungle shrine made out of stone you didn't know was there and bang, you know, you don't have a, you don't have a machete anymore. You can see the pitting on the blade. It's so, this thing is beautiful. All right, and then here is the original sheath. It's that uh, canvas, that military green canvas, and then 1943. And then some numbers written on by various people. S2440, I'm not sure. What is that? Is that like a military serial number? Um, or is that the number that uh, name, rank, and serial number? Is that like a serial number? I don't know. Let me know if any of you know. Uh, it's got a reinforced shape here uh, with just extra canvas. There's no metal in this. It's pretty uh, pretty floppy, but the throat is also metallic. And here's something that's pretty cool. Check this out. Ready? Listen. Love that. I think it's just like the movies. So now most swords and most knives are not set up for metal rubbing metal. But in every movie, when someone pulls out a knife or pulls out a sword, you hear shing, and that's our that's our uh, uh, indication that someone has unsheathed a blade, uh, whether or not you know. But like ninety nine times out of a hundred, you're not pulling a sword or a machete or a blade and hearing a shing. But on that one, you do, and I love that. All right, last up, this is the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart. It's the one I've had the longest. I bought it from. Public Safety Supply in on Mayfield Road in uh, in Ohio in like 1984 or something like that. Uh, and my brother made a sheath for it oh, maybe 15 years ago. Beautiful stout leather sheath. There's his little maker's mark when he cycles into leather. He's a hobbyist of all sorts, so he doesn't do leather all the time. Uh, this was his very first thing in leather. And he thought the machete was his. And then I came to visit it. I'm like, that's where it is. And he's like, well, I thought that was mine. Um, there it is. This is the Ontario Knife Company uh, U.S. military issue machete uh, from vaguely, I'll say, the 80s. I don't know when it was, uh, but this is what they were selling in the 80s. And I have to say, this thing has probably seen more action um, than any other well, definitely than any other machete in my collection by by a thousand, by an order of magnitude, uh, because this used to be uh, when I was growing up and I had to do lawn work. Uh, at least I can bring my machete with me. And I, you know, we had tons of trees and woods and stuff. And not that I was clearing paths and stuff like that, but I loved having this on me and I would find any excuse to use it in 2008. Um, I was visiting my parents and they had a big red oak fall in their woods. This is before they had moved. And my dad and I went out to, cause it fell right over a path. We went out to chop it to, uh, you know, to make a hole so you could still uh, walk the path. And we brought out this and an ax. And I'll tell you what, that ax, it was still, it was pretty sharp, but the ax was nothing compared to this. I chopped that whole giant tree with this thing. And, uh, Loved it. And there's something to be said about thin, flexible, and wickedly sharp, you know. And then uh, this, I believe, is 1095. Um, it's just born and bred for the outdoors. This is such an awesome knife. I, I highly recommend any sort of Ontario machete uh, based on this because um, we all know Ontario Knife and Tool is a great company. Um, but uh, not but and. Um, I just think they make the best machete, and that's just because I've used this to do so much over the years. Again, full tang, traditional low pommel, and uh, I do recommend uh, a little over the back of the hand lanyard because you can 
slide back and let the lanyard do some of the work. All right. Thank you guys so much for checking out my 10 great machetes. It's funny that I have 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put that back up, Jim. It's funny that I have uh, 10 machetes because uh, I was like, hmm, I wonder how many I have. Is it a round number? Will it look good in the title? And lo and behold, there's 10 of them. Uh, of course, I have the stuff on the wall behind me, which um, in many cultural cases, uh, the weapons start as tools and migrate. Life's a jungle, machete on. I love that. All right, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives and Sunday for a great interview with a knife luminary. My name is Bob DeMarco, and I'm thanking Jim, who's working his magic behind the switcher. Until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.